Why do birds suddenly appear every time you are near? Just like me, they long to be close to you. Hello, everybody. This is Dr. Willie Jolly, and this is my beautiful bride. Misty. And we're the authors of the book, Make Love, Make Money, Make It Last. Ten Secrets to Shape a Great Marriage. Going on 40 years soon. Uh, marriage. We've been together over 40 years. and married so so over 38 plus 4 42 and so uh, we'll be 40 20, 38 years next month uh coming up in yeah about a month and uh so we're grateful for first of all i want to welcome everybody who might be joining us for the first time wherever you may be around the world we are grateful for people now joining all over the world tuning in and uh, we we just are so grateful for all thank of you. Thank you for joining us. Thank evening. you. Thank you. We are grateful for all of you who watch on YouTube. Now we want to ask that you would remember our TED Talk is now available on jollymarriage.com. It will bless you. And I want to say greetings to all the people. You have to tell them what it is. It's a TED Talk. Why should oh, they listen? Oh, you're right. How to never, ever argue again in marriage. How to never, ever argue in marriage. Ever, ever it doesn't marriage. mean you don't disagree. That's right. We just share with you how to do it. That's right. Okay, so what's the topic for tonight? Let's get well, to it. Well, let me finish. I got to give a shout out to the folks in Richmond, Virginia. Oh, okay. Where I was, we were last Monday night and we were there Tuesday for the CBS morning show in, yes. the, in Richmond, uh, Virginia this morning. And then we went to our friend Corey Mosley and his beautiful bride's. Siamara, mm -hmm. and went with them and had a great lunch to with their them to their studio. And uh, we recorded a special show. Small business. RVA. R -V -A small business. Small business. And, I, and it aired today. My interview aired today. Oh, wow. So if you want to hear that. Is it going to be online? It's all over the internet. Mm. So RVA Small Business. Last but not least is next week we're doing a special show that will not include my wife. It'll just <gasps> be... <laughs> Me and my friend Corey <laughs> Mosley did a special edition for men. Now that doesn't say for men only; just focused on men. Women, we recommend. And you I listen. did not. I I was not in the studio. She wasn't even so in the room. So I'm looking forward to what they had to say. Yeah, you're gonna enjoy it. We had a real in-depth talk, and what I encourage women to watch is because we talk about what men need. And we also talk to men about what women need. And we're talking straight talk to men. So we encourage ladies to invite your men, your men folks, your men friends, your your, your anybody male. They're going to get some good out of this. So join us next. I don't think anyone. But uh -huh. women and men should listen. Mm -hmm. But it will just be two men talking. And okay. it will be a unique I'm looking, I'm looking forward to, to listening or viewing it. Yes. Wherever we're going to be. Yes. Okay. okay. All right. All right. Go ahead. All right. Now that said, um, let's go to this week's topic. We have, you know, we have, invite you all every week. We say the same thing. One, we want you to send us emails about your issues, your concerns, a topic that you want us to to deal with. And we got a topic from someone who watches every week on YouTube saying, "What about?" single people hmm. and how do you find a good mate or a good spouse or a good partner and how do you as i like to say separate the prospects from the suspects hmm. so this and is a slightly different approach and i think we approach it from different angles so you can write it here and so just for those to know i'm gonna start with this that we have a chapter in the book, a full chapter that was brilliant. I think Dee must have come up with this idea. What? That's put a chapter in the book for people who are not yet married. And after we did the 10 steps that we incorporate in our marriage and we've talked about in our marriage events, Dee, I believe, said we need to do something for people who are not yet married. And we really did a deep dive on that. A happy marriage is like a long conversation, which always seems too short. Andre Marias. So 
make a thoughtful decision. Life involves many major decisions, but the most important decision you will make after the decision for your faith is who you choose to marry. The person will be responsible for 90% of your misery or 90% of your joy. So choose well, make a thoughtful decision. And so we, in this chapter, give you some tests and some- Some ideas as, ideas. To, what, as to what a thoughtful decision well, and, and, some, and some tests that we got to put people through. They don't know they're being tested, but there's a five-day test, a 30-day test, and then seek wise counsel from people who are happily married. And then in that chapter is my favorite quote in the book that I use every time I do a one-on-one -on -one interview. It's my quote from Zig Ziglar, and I'll read it, and then we're going to talk about some of the things we recommend. Zig Ziglar said, I have no way of knowing whether you marry the right person or the wrong person, but I do know that many people have a lot of wrong ideas about marriage and what it takes to have a happy and successful marriage. I'll be the first to admit that it is possible that you did marry the wrong person. However, if you treat the wrong person like the right person, you could well have ended up marrying the right person in the first place. And on the other hand, if you marry the right person and you treat that person wrong, you certainly will have ended up marrying the wrong person. I also know that it's far more important to be the right kind of person than it is to marry the right person. In short, whether you marry the right person or the wrong person, it's primarily up to you. Ooh, I love that quote by Zig Ziglar, my mentor, the late, great Zig Ziglar. That's in the, the chapter about... Uh, people who are not yet married. Okay, now we're going to talk about some of the research that we've discovered. Now, first of all, we want you to know that people get married for all sorts of re reasons and determining if a person is a good fit for you and has positive qualifications and, and uh, qu qualities, and you got to get to know them at a deeper level. Here's some suggestions to help you assess whether the person is a good person or not for you. Observe their actions. Check them out. Go out but and watch them. Now, sometimes people put on a good show. We know that. We know that. We know that. But watch them on the side eye sometimes. You know, check them out how they're doing stuff. Observe their actions. Pay close attention to how they treat other people, including their family, friends, strangers. Do they show kindness? Do they show respect? Do they show empathy? And notice how they handle difficult situations or conflicts. That means you got to have a little time with them. And actions speak louder than words. Communicate with your values. Have conversations about values. What do you believe? What do you believe? What do you believe? What do you think? How do you think children should be raised? Those are things that you get to people to get to talk about values. Are they consistent? Assess their consistency in behaviors and words. Do they demonstrate consistent? positive traits and values? Do you have mutual respect and support? A healthy relationship requires mutual respect and support. Notice if they value your opinions, respect your boundary, and encourage your personal growth. Emotional intelligence is important in a relationship. Observe how they handle their own emotions and respond to the emotions of others. Are they empathetic, understanding, able to communicate their emotions effectively? Are they trustworthy and reliable? Are they trustworthy and reliable? Trust is crucial in any relationship. Access, if they're honest, do they keep their promises? Are they reliable in their actions? They tell you they're going to call you. Did they call you? Hmm. They tell you you're going to go out. Did they show up? Can you trust them with your thoughts, your feelings, and vulnerabilities? Are your compatibilities compatible? Access the compatibility between the two of you. Do you share confidence? common interests, common values, goals? Are you able to communicate and resolve conflicts effectively? And then seek feedback, talk to other people. And then one more is you got to communicate, effective communication. Are you talking? Is it healthy? Are you, are you respectful to each other? And then your attitude towards others. So these are a few of the things that we recommend that you look for and how you find a person is somebody you should be checking out, you should be spending time with. Now, a couple of those things caught my attention because when we were dating, it was a hundred years ago. <laughs> what attracted me to you? First of all- You want to be truthful? No. You 
I mean, before we had any romance, what what made you even hang around? Now you can be truthful about that. Oh, we got along. You made me laugh. Uh -huh. We came up as friends. Yeah, and we talked about everything. Yes, we really did it talk. It was about very it. easy to talk. I enjoyed being with you. Yeah, we talked about everything. We we talked about my daughter. I had a daughter. We talked about her. You told me. Was that the first or the, the, the second time? I wouldn't even say we were having a date. No, I wouldn't say we had a date at that point. Because I wasn't sure that I wanted to actually talk to you. Right. Um, but you told me you had a daughter, and I thought how admirable of you that while well, she didn't live with you, you paid for her to go to, to a Christian school, and she stayed with you for the summers, and I thought that that was an admirable quality, a very responsible young man. That's what I thought. Now, one more thing about finding, here's how you, you know, I've just given you some of the things to look out for, but how do you attract, learn, develop the, how do you even know that this is what I want to get to? Self-reflection. One of the things that attracted me to Dee was she was very confident in herself. She wasn't looking for somebody to complete her. She wasn't aggressively trying to kowtow me or anything. She was very confident in yourself. W would you say that's true? I was comfortable with myself. You were comfortable with your own and skin. I wasn't looking for, I wasn't looking for anyone. I was trying to figure out my next my professional business move. Okay. That, that's really what I was and doing. I actually hired her for my company as a consultant. So that's, that's something, you know, expand your so social circles. Engage in activity, join communities where you can meet new okay, people. Let's, okay, let, let's unpack some of this. So, so mm -hmm. you provided the overview. Mm -hmm. What was one of the first things you said? Uh, oh, I've said a lot of stuff. Okay, what are your top three? Give those to me. Uh, which ones? The ones that I just gave? first set. First set were, are your values consistent? Mm -hmm. And then I, I talked about your values. I talked about uh, let's see. Actions. Are you consistent in behavior mm -hmm. and communication? The communication. Okay. Okay. Oh, let me finish this though. This is important. Um, it because it's very important how you find these people. Okay. Okay. Very important. Expand your social circles. Online dating is a way that people are now. Obviously, we don't have any. We have no frame of reference because there was no such thing as online when we when we started dating. Okay, that's why, why don't you put a pin right there? Because we come from two completely different perspectives. Oh, I got to get one more. <laughs> Be open, approachable, but then ask friends and family about people who they might know who can introduce you. Now I say that because we have a friend, two friends in South Carolina with a husband, his wife died. And he made a list of what he needed in a woman. This is pre pre internet. He wrote a list of the, of the qualities that he wanted. Had to be like traveling. He had three kids. You know, must be compatible with children. Must be glamorous. Must be sophisticated. I mean, he wrote all of these. He wrote what he wanted, and he sent it out to like twenty of his friends around the country in a letter. Some called and said, this is a crazy list. Said, well, what are you, this would never happen. But one guy in Boston called and said, I know mm -hmm. a woman who fits all of these qualities. I, I, I know exactly what you're talking okay. about. Okay, I know a woman who mm -hmm. fits all of these qualities. He's, uh, his friend called him, called him, told him that. He said, can you introduce me? He introduced her. They talked on the phone. He said, I'm flying to Boston. I'm going to fly to Boston to meet you tomorrow. They ended up getting married and have been happily married for over twenty some, over twenty five to thirty years. Mm. And and what a great story! And he knew what he was looking for. I think maybe that's exception. And he shared. I don't know if that's exception. Mm. I believe most people don't know what they're looking for and don't. They don't, don't know what they want. And have not made some clarity in their mind what they want. They kind of mm. take what comes their way. Mm. All right. So okay. I just want to think that that's interesting. Mm, I had okay. completely, I had completely forgotten about them. What a wonderful! That's problem. why I had to get that in. Okay, yes. go ahead. Okay, man. I you appreciate get. that. Okay, yeah. a different perspective. Perspective. A different perspective. All right. Okay. So, 
today, after this is a survey uh, that was done by, let's see, I don't know the name of the group right now. Uh, it was an, an American psychological survey, you know, like from Psychology Today. Uh -huh. It was done a couple of years ago. Uh -huh. After the, the 2016 election, where it says that you're finding most people, when you say most people, at least 50% of the of, of the young people, and that's what's done after 2016, go online. Right. Because people are they were busy for whatever other reasons. It just swipe, makes all it, I know you it, swipe it, left or swipe uh, right. I don't uh, know which way it is. I've never was, done it. But. That was okay Cupid saying mm -hmm, that. Mm -hmm. And then it was e harmony in a survey from 2017 that said dating apps and dating sites, the, the traffic increased exponentially. Okay, after 2017, so every year, the use of the dating sites and the apps are going up. Mm -hmm. Now, they don't say why, they just say the use of it's going up. My takeaway is, is that people get busier, and sometimes you want to, you, you want to scope out the landscape before you even let them see who you are. Okay. Okay, so that's why a You're dating still a representative? App, you're not the real person? You're getting a representative say, or you're getting a real person? I, I, I don't know that. I'm just saying sometimes it's safer. Let's use that word. It's safer to use a dating app or swipe right or swipe left. And there are so many. I went online just to look at the different kinds. Of, it, 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 it's enough just to, you become paralyzed. There's so many options. So I think, After age 65, what are you looking for? But going back to what you said, if you don't really know who you are, who you are, who you are. Well, you, who, maybe you think you know who you are. Uh, okay, you think you know. How, how do you know when you know you who you are? How do you know? You, you're comfortable with yourself. Okay. And you could be alone. You don't have to have another person to complain. Well, people want you. companionship. You want That's companionship. why they ask us the question. Right. You want companionship. If I were not had married you, I didn't It'd ever be a have, hot mess. <laughs> I never had problem, you know, having no, a relationship. It's just like I tell you all the time when you have gotten on my last nerve. I never get they, on it. It, it, <laughs> Go ahead, but you can say there would be no problem in, in you finding someone. Oh, you're charming. Oh, you've got the words and everything. But after a while, they were like, oh my God, this is a lot of work. I'm gonna throw him back in the ocean. That would be the <laughs> comment. I'm gonna throw him back because you are a piece of work. Yeah. I, but um, it takes um, it takes a certain person <laughs> to live with all my ideas oh and my all goodness. my activities and on all the, my... on the high wire. So breaking it down, looks fade away. Let's get some. Well, what I got down. to do with because. When oh, you're swiping that. right and left to look oh, for people, for people, you're just looking at the first looks. thing. Is the well, look. but hold on, I know it's I know it's a, I know it's a uh, natural thing. Oh, they, how are you attracted to somebody? It's always first through your eyes. Okay. I mean, it's always through your eyes first, and then you start being more dis, the, 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 the disseminate or the what's the word? Discriminating. Discriminating. You start being more but discriminating, if it's only, and if they if they if they, they stupid as a rock. But how did you know that? <laughs> Until you start talking Until to them. Until you start talking to them. So you them. first get attracted by the eyesight, and then you got to see if they have anything in their brain or it was just. How do you find out they have anything in their brain? You have to talk to them. Or, oh, let me, let, let me put a pin there. Okay. There's something I said to what you. What did Brian say? He says uh, uh, a, a dreamboat body, but a shipwrecked, a shipwrecked mind. <laughs> As I was saying to you, my experience, what was week before last, I went to the seminar. Right? Yes, you told me I went, I went to the seminar for people over 50. Yes. The first hour of the seminar talked about romance scams. Okay. Romance scams are so popular with the age group of 50 and over. Okay. And the Justice Department had their representative there who talked about that they were over, I mean, my eyes were glazed over by the time he finished. The Justice Department go to their website over 100 romance scams. So you have people who are lonely. That's meant more women than men because there are more women who are single than, than there are men who, who are who are left standing. And 
The goal is to separate you from your money. So not only do you have to deal with, okay, I want to find companionship. It doesn't mean that you might want to run off and get married. After a certain age, maybe the kids are grown. You know, you come up with a profile and then you say, but then you have to be careful. Right. All right. So if you, you find somebody, how do you find them? Is it do you do, you do the, the dating site? Do you then meet in a very public place to have Absolutely. a conversation? Absolutely. You meet for never. never. We would not to recommend that. Home. No, never. no, public no. Public place during the day, and, each person with their own transportation. And their own money, too. And their own money. That's right. And you have to you have to be mindful. How can you have more than a hundred different romance scams? Well, there's a bunch of uh, Greg Cazara said what I said about uh, a, a, a dreamboat body and a shipwrecked mind. Uh -huh. He said, "Lights on, but no one's home." <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, and that happens, folks. People, you know, that's why you got you got to go out to separate, and then you got to have people with character, and then you got to be able to discur discern, so, and just try and discern if the person is. The real person or a representative, as Bernice Mitchell and Kenneth Mitchell said, bless their hearts. Uh, when we interviewed them, they've both gone on to be with the Lord, but they have been married 60 some years. It, so uh, you can have, tell your friends that you're interested in friendships. Yeah. And if they know of any responsible single would you have introduced, you I as a so. friend have done that. I think that is part of it. I've introduced, they asked me, ask your friends. So see, some people are not willing to do that. Mm -hmm. Ask your friends, do you know somebody who would be a great person for me to have at least just a companionship? Companionship. And I've got a number of them. You have on. done very well with that. I say he he's a good companionship yeah. person. Because you know the character of that individual. Yeah, I know both people. Mm -hmm. And I said, here's somebody you should, you know, be in touch with. Mm -hmm. And I've had really good results. You have, you have had great results. Yes. They don't ask me. I don't know anybody. No, they, they don't ask you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. What else you got? Okay. Um, You didn't like my, the, the looks fade away. Nah. Because see, he's, okay. he, I mean. Do you want that? Okay, so how does that, I won't, I won't, what does I won't that mean? That. Okay. I mean, that's what we you're initially going to want. Yes. But okay. you're going to say, oh, then. Okay. Now, do somebody did compliment? say, hold up, somebody did say last week, he was, when he looked for his wife, who he eventually married, he looked at her mother. Uh -huh. He did say, I looked at her so, mother. So how do you age? And I think much of that deals with how you take care but of But some people, look, some people, hold on now, there's another part to this. What? Okay, here's the part that some people, is not important. Okay, they, okay. they get their train, but that's not why they stay around. I, I oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. I don't understand what you're no, saying. No, it's, it's not, not important. important. What's not important? The looks, if they of their partner is not important to them. Because it's the person they dig the person so much. Okay. All they right. just dig. I.e., when you have that picture of when you, when William was a little boy down the country, mm -hmm. and you, you. And I was 40 pounds a year. You're at least 40 pounds. And you said to me, you said to me, why didn't <laughs> you tell me you that tell I had put on all that weight? I said, didn't matter. Didn't it I matter. You did. I said, and didn't I matter. Said, but it mattered to me. And you know why it mattered to oh, me? Oh, but I said to me, I, I want to have mattered to you. And I appreciate that. I said, but didn't you know, matter. You know why it mattered to me? Why was that? Because I have a family history of diabetes. Yeah, okay. And high but blood that, pressure. But I'm talking about the, the other from. part. I got it. All right, Janice saying, Jefferson, who was in part, who, who, hey, who, who did the event that Dee spoke at. Thank you, Janice, for inviting Dee. Yes. Dee. Uh, she said, thanks for sharing what we witnessed last week with the romance scams and seniors. We enjoyed you so much. Um, okay, I will leave the rest. But that, that's that's a blessing, okay, that Janice uh, invited Dee to come speak uh, for this senior well, some event. some remarks, but the, the whole seminar was so great because of the information that she shared and, and that there were so, most of the people there were women yeah. and most of them were single because of, of you know, being widowed or, or, or divorced or what have you. But the cautionary tale 
was so very important. Okay, so, so while we're looking for companionship, we do have to be cautious. Also. Have to be wise. So let's go back to these points. How did how did we come together? Well, here's what we recommend. One is that you expand your social circles and you tell your friends that you are open to dating or that you're mm -hmm. looking for a companion. I think that's a looking very for companionship. companionship. And then you expand your social circles, whether it's church, whether it's uh, social activities, and you know what you're looking for. And volunteer. Well, maybe you that's can what volunteer. You do. Yeah, sure. That, I'm just, whatever way you can. But think about what you are looking for and not settling. Okay, that's important. Just so you can say, I have somebody. And once you get a prospect, you want to start putting them through the test. Well, you want to investigate. Yeah, but the test we put them through in this mm -hmm. book. The three-day test, the five-day test, and the 30-day test. Here's what I would add. The more that, that I put I you have through learned, the test, you didn't know it. Yeah, the you're, three-day right. test, but the five-day test, do, the thirty-day test. Right. I would, I would, I would pay an investigator <laughs> for everyone. How you do each one of? Well, first of all, I'm not going to be. I, I wouldn't be dating anyway. Something happened. To you. We've already had that conversation. Okay, right? but. But, but that's, that's saying, not it, lot. It, that's it, not it, rational. You're gonna pay for everybody. You're gonna Google them. You should Google them. I'm gonna go. Yes. Yeah, you should Google that person and yes. see if they got a arrest record yes. or whatever. That's just common sense. Now that we got internet. Today. But here's what I'm saying: expand your uh, expand your social circles. Two is when you get to know them, see if you got similar. Interest. Values, interests, okay. Your D is funny. So, so, Brenda Colson said you are funny. You are right. <laughs> D is funny. People don't know it, but she's hilarious. And then so then you also find out whether or not you are uh compatible when it comes to money. Yeah, well oh uh, there you go. Money, not just money, but values. Are they how and you learn this person, you check mm -hmm. them out, you see if there's something that, that is comfortable or you forcing it. Is it fit? In like a glove or is it forced fit? Mm -hmm. And that's when you know that you got somebody you can spend time with. Well, look, our time it is raises up. raises the hair on the back uh, of your neck some things. of the things that they say. Yeah. couple of things I want to share. I am doing my one-man show here in Washington on uh, June 17th, night before Father's Day. You go to the jolly, no, you go to thecomebackshow.com to order tickets. Thecomebackshow.com. Uh, Brenda said she'd have a police report done on them. Well, I think I like yes. All right, but you know, see. You know, <laughs> oh, help me. Anyway, uh, the comeback show dot com. That's your comeback show. We still want to make sure people know that they can get access to our relationship repair series that we did last year. This time, last year, it is a great five part series on communication on family on sex, on communication, oh, communication, finances, romance, sex, family matters, and blended family, and, and then a, a sixth bonus session on the 11 biggest mistakes that people make in relationships and how to fix them. It's available at jollymarriage.com slash events, jollymarriage.com slash events. Invest in your relationship. So get the books. You're going to get the book. Get two copies. One for you and one for your significant other. Do it now. Go to jollymarriage.com. Get the book. If you're single, get two copies too. Like the lady said at the church where I spoke, she said, give me two copies. I said, she said, my husband's on the way. I said, what? Give me two copies. My husband's on the way. I told Dee, her husband coming to pick her up. She said, oh, no, no, no. He's on the way. He ain't here. I ain't got no husband right now. But he on the way. And when he get here, I want to hand him this book. <laughs> I think you also have to know what are your deal breakers. Oh, of course you do. What are deal breakers? Of course. Well, I think that's great. Okay. So get the book, get two copies, one for you and one for significant other, even if you don't have one, and then get the relationship series at jollymarriage.com slash events. And then stay connected. If you have a question, a concern, a topic that you want us to deal oh, with. A question you want us to delve into. Yeah. Send it to info at willyjolly.com. Info at willyjolly.com. Dot com. Well, our time is up. We want to thank you for yours. And I want to again thank everybody in uh, Richmond. And remember, next week is a special man to man. And this is not for men only, but it's focused on men. Because I'll be listening in. Women, you can have your gentleman to 
watch and listen. And it's going to be very informative, enlightening for them and for you. So next Monday night, special show. All right, our time is up. Let's go out with some music from my jazz album, Close to You. Hope you always enjoy it, and I enjoy sharing. Here we go. Did you say jolly? Oh, jolly out. Why do birds suddenly appear every time you are near? Just like me, they long to be close to you.